A New York state lawmaker is accusing Democratic Governor Andrew Cuomo of threatening him over the administration's handling of COVID-19 nursing home deaths. Assembly member Ron Kim alleges Mr. Cuomo said he would destroy him if he didn't help cover for an aide who admitted the state withheld numbers related to the true death toll in long-term care facilities. A senior advisor to Governor Cuomo is denying the allegations. In a statement Wednesday, Rich as a party said Mr. Kim was lying, adding that he was one of three people in the room when the call occurred between Governor Cuomo and Mr. Kim. Joining me now is Josefa Velasquez. She's a senior reporter at The City, an independent and nonprofit newsroom covering New York. Josefa, welcome. Who was behind the report on assisted living homes, and what is the difference in the number of deaths uh, listed in the report versus what Governor Cuomo's office first reported? So the governor's office for months has been asked by state lawmakers how many people died in nursing homes. Um, and really, this has been a long time coming, and lawmakers from the spectrum of political parties have said that we want this information, we want these numbers, and the administration had been stonewalling them. It turns out that as this was happening, the New York State Attorney General, Tish James, a fellow Democrat, was doing her own investigation to find out the true death count for uh, residents of nursing homes and long-term care facilities who had died of COVID-19. And it was far higher than what the Cuomo administration had been previously saying. So the Cuomo administration had said that some 8,000 people who were nursing home residents had died from COVID-19. And it turns out that the number was actually closer to 15,000. And the discrepancy there actually is very, you know, meticulous in that the way people are counted, whether they died in the nursing home itself or whether they died at a hospital, but they were a nursing home resident prior to that and were transferred there. So that's where the discrepancy in the numbers mm. comes from. Okay, well, Governor Cuomo addressed the criticism during a lengthy press conference on Monday. Let's go ahead and listen to some of that. No excuses. Uh, I... I accept responsibility for that. Uh, I am in charge. I take responsibility. Uh, we should have provided more information faster. We were too focused on doing the job and addressing the crisis of the moment, and we did not do a good enough job in providing information. I take total responsibility for that. The pain in it, is it created confusion and cynicism and pain for the families of the loved ones. So, Josefa, he says he's taking responsibility, but I wonder, has he apologized to the family members of people who died in nursing homes? So he has not yet said the words, I'm sorry, uh, which is notable. He did apologize for creating a so-called quote-unquote void in information that allowed uh, disinformation, according to him, to spread. Um, and really, by, not withhold, by withholding those numbers and the information about what happened in nursing homes, it added fuel to this fire. And now we're seeing months and months of frustration with family members who are trying to find out what actually happened and have some accountability come to fruition at this point. And everyone is frustrated because the sheer number of people who passed away is a lot higher than what we previously thought. And as this was all happening, New York granted immunity to nursing home operators. So these families have no recourse to try to find some answers for their pain. And the governor has not officially said the words, I'm sorry, for these policies that drove people from the hospitals who may have had COVID into the nursing homes, which was just tinder and dry grass. Hmm. Uh, well, Governor Cuomo has significant emergency powers to deal with COVID-19. How are those powers being viewed now? Is there talk of scaling them back? 
Yeah, so these emergency powers that the legislature gave him, gave him broad latitude to do what needed to be done when we were in the midst of the pandemic. And and this happened in March. And there's a lot of talk now between legislators of clawing back that power um, that has allowed the governor to act unilaterally without the legislature's input on things. Sources are telling me that there have been discussions ongoing as to how to do this. And what started off as some, you know, a couple of members talking here and there about clawing back these powers has really ballooned over the last few days and hours and is now a topic of conversation that's being widely held in closed door meetings as to how do we go about removing these existing powers, um, which would involve the legislature, both houses of the legislature to jointly rescind them. So... What started off as a whisper is slowly becoming a roar, um, especially in light of his attack today on Assemblymember Ron Kim. Yeah, on that point, New York Assemblymember Ron Kim says that Governor Cuomo actually threatened him over the state's handling of nursing home deaths. Now, Cuomo's office just put out a statement which reads in part, quote, Mr. Kim is lying about his conversation with Governor Cuomo Thursday night. I know because I was one of three other people in the room when the phone call occurred. At no time did anyone threaten to destroy anyone with their wrath nor engage in a cover-up. Josefa, what are you learning about this? So it's not uncommon for the governor to make these calls. Several lawmakers say that they received similar calls that felt threatening, um, that felt like the governor was speaking down to these members. And it would be difficult to say this is an unlikely occurrence. Uh, This administration is known for being tough and I've covered them for years. One of their early mantras was, we operate at two speeds, get along and kill. Clearly, we're seeing the latter portion of Mm. that in play here. So while there are, there supposedly are other people in the room as this call occurred, what Assemblymember Kim is detailing and experiencing is not something that is outright uncommon. All right. Josefa Velasquez. Josefa, thanks very much for joining us and sharing your insights with us. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.